Carnegie Hall in New York City, the home of the world's greatest musical events. Today's event is one in a series of New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts under the musical direction of Leonard Bernstein. And here is Mr. Bernstein. Give me that spray. Any kind of spray. Oh, there's no time? No time? Now, what do you think that music's all about? Can you tell me? God. That's just what I thought you'd say. Cowboys, bandits, horses, the Wild West. I know my little daughter, Jamie, who's five years old and who's sitting up there, agrees with you. When she heard me play this piece, she said, Ooh, the Lone Ranger song. I owe silver. Well, I hate to disappoint her, and you too but it really isn't about the Lone Ranger at all. It's about notes, E flats and F sharps. You see, no matter how many times people tell you stories about what music means, forget them. Stories aren't what music means about, at all. Music is never about anything. Music just is. Music is notes, beautiful notes and sounds put together in such a way that we get pleasure out of listening to them. That's all there is to it. And when we ask, what does it mean? What does this piece of music mean? Then we're asking a very hard question. And that's the question we're going to try to answer today. Now, it's a funny thing about this meaning business, in music anyway. When you say, what does it mean? What you're really saying is, what is it trying to tell me? What ideas? does it make me have? Just like words. When you hear words, you get ideas from them. If I say to you, oh, I burned my finger, then immediately you get an idea from what I said, or some ideas. You get the idea that I burned my finger, that it hurts, that I might not be able to play the piano anymore, or that I have a loud, ugly voice when I scream. Lots of different ideas like that. That's words. But if I play you notes, notes on the piano like that. Those notes don't tell you any ideas. Those notes aren't about burning your finger or Sputniks or lampshades or rockets or anything. Well, what are they about? They're about music. For instance, take this piece by Chopin. Beautiful, isn't it? But what's it about? Nothing. Or take this Beethoven sonata. That's not about anything either. Or take this piece of boogie woogie. It's not about anything either. They're none of them about anything but they're all fun to listen to. Now, why should they be fun to listen to? I don't know, it's just part of human nature to like to listen to music. 
You see, notes aren't like words at all. Because if I say one single word all by itself to you, like rocket, immediately you have an idea. You see a picture in your mind. Rocket, bang, picture. But if I play a note, one note all alone, that means nothing. Just a plain old F sharp or a B flat. A sound, that's all, higher or lower, louder or softer. A sound that can seem very different if I play it or if I sing it or if an oboe plays it or if a xylophone plays it or if a trombone plays it. Very different. It's all the same note, only with a different sound. Now, all music is, is a combination of sounds like that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, all put together according to a plan. And the guy who plans it is called the composer, whether he's named Richard Rogers or Rimsky-Korsakov. He's the composer. And his plan is to put the sounds together with rhythms and different instruments and voices or whatever in such a way that what finally comes out is exciting or fun or touching or interesting or all of those together. That's called music, and it has a musical meaning, which has nothing to do with any stories or pictures or anything like that. Of course, if there is a story connected to the music, okay. Sometimes it's good. In a way, it could give an extra meaning to the music, but it's extra. Remember that. And so, whatever music means, it's not the story. Well, what does it mean? That's what we're going to find out. Now, let's take the first step to finding out. Remember the piece we played at the beginning? That Wild West piece of music. Well, for one thing, it can't mean the Wild West for the simple reason that it was written by a fellow who never heard of the Wild West, an Italian named Rossini. Now, we think his music means cowboys and horses and the Wild West because we've been told so by so many movies and television shows. But Rossini really wrote this piece as an overture to an opera called William Tell, which is about people in Switzerland, which is pretty far from the Wild West. Well then, maybe the music's supposed to be about William Tell and Switzerland instead of about cowboys. Is that what it's about? No. It's not about William Tell or cowboys or lampshades or rockets or anything. Then what makes it so exciting? Well, there are a million reasons. But they're all musical reasons. That's the main point. For instance, take the rhythm, which is like the rhythm of galloping horses, or like the rhythm of drums in a battle. But that doesn't mean that the music is about drums or horses or battles. The meaning is only the excitement of that rhythm, you see? Now, another reason it's exciting is that it has a mighty fine tune one that's easy to remember and stirs your blood. It starts with a phrase going up, and answers itself with a phrase going down. It's like a question and answer. Or maybe it's more like an argument with the second person winning it. Uh, let's ha try and have that argument, you and me, and see who wins. I'm going to sing the first phrase, and you're going to argue back with the second phrase, and I'm going to argue back again with the third phrase, and you're going to wind it up with the fourth phrase. Okay, ready, go. You win. You see? You see how exciting that last phrase is? It has all the excitement and triumph of winning an argument. It makes you feel good. But there are still more reasons why this music is exciting. For instance, the way it's played, the instruments that play it, like those trumpets at the beginning. Or the violins, who use their bows in a jumping way to make that galloping sound. Would you show us, Mr. Corigliano? You see, now when all the strings do that together, it really gallops. Watch.
So you see, this music is exciting because it was written to be exciting, for musical reasons and for no other reasons. Well, if all that's true, then why does a composer put names on his music at all? Why doesn't he just write something called symphony or trio or composition number 95012 or anything? Why does he give his music a name like the Sorcerer's Apprentice or whatever it happens to be if it's not important to the music? Well, every once in a while, an artist is stimulated to express himself by something outside himself, something he reads or something he sees or something that's happened to him. Haven't you ever felt like that, that you wanted to dance or sing because something happened to you that made you want to dance or sing and express your feelings in some way? I'm, I'm sure that you've all had that feeling. Well, it's the same with a composer. For instance, Johann Strauss wrote an awful lot of waltzes. And one of them goes like this. You know the name of this one? Right, the Blue Danube. Now, maybe the Danube River inspired Strauss to write that waltz. I don't know, I have my doubts. But in any case, those notes don't have anything to do with the Danube River, do they? Now, what's this one? What? Right, Tales of the Vienna Woods. Well, why couldn't that one be called by the Blue Danube? Or the Emperor Waltz? or the Tennessee Waltz, or the Missouri Waltz, for that matter. What's the difference? A Strauss Waltz by any other name is still just a lovely waltz. The name doesn't matter, except to help you tell one waltz apart from another, and maybe give the music a little more color, like a sort of fancy dress costume. But now I'm going to try a trick with you. We're going to play you a piece that has a story, a very good story, but I'm going to tell you the wrong story. I'm just going to make one up out of my head that doesn't belong to this music at all. And I'm not going to tell you the real name of this piece. And you see if the story and the music don't go together just as well as if it were the real story. Okay, here goes. In the middle of a big city, there stands an enormous jail full of prisoners. It's midnight and all the prisoners are asleep except for one who can't sleep because he was put in jail unjustly. And he spends the whole night practicing on his kazoo while all the other prisoners are sleeping and snoring all around him. You all know what a kazoo is. You? Well, this kazoo playing prisoner has a friend who's going to come and rescue him tonight. And this friend's name is Superman. So. Superman comes charging down through the alley on his motorcycle. <laughs> then he whistles his secret whistle so that his friend, the prisoner, will know he's coming. <laughs> now, as he gets nearer the prison, he hears all the prisoners snoring away peacefully in the dead silence of the night. And over this snoring, he hears his friend playing on his kazoo, which gets louder and louder as he gets nearer. Suddenly, he charges into the prison yard and bops the guard over the head. <coughs> Kazoo stops playing, and with all the snoring still going on, he grabs his friend and whisks him away on his motorcycle. 